You're probably about to go back to work, but are you dreading it? A survey done last year from Seek Learning found out that less than half of people are happy at work. But whether it's the job itself or the people you're working with, it can really suck the joy out of your life. So we thought we'd bring in Rachel Hannam, who is the director of North Brisbane Psychologists and regularly deals with people who are unhappy at work. Rachel, good morning. Good morning. What are the main kind of problems that you find people face when it comes to being unhappy at work? Well, yeah, I do talk to people a fair bit about their their jobs in my practice, and I also go into workplaces, so I hear lots of different stories. Um, one of the common factors is that you know people don't feel a strong sense of engagement or a strong sense of purpose in their work. They've lost the love, they've lost the enthusiasm, um, and you know they're thinking about leaving. And another key factor that I hear about is people's difficulties with other people in the workplace. So conflict, um, exclusion, occasionally bullying, uh, some of the issues that come up, you know, with the interpersonal factors at work. Okay, well, let's start with the job itself. So when you say people aren't engaged, is that because they've chosen a job that doesn't really fit their personality? Or what's the reason for that? Sometimes that seems really apparent to me. You know, somebody's maybe chosen to work as a dental nurse and they've got a really bubbly, extroverted personality and it seems kind of clear to me that their personality is not the best fit for this particular job. You know, a librarian or something where, you know, they need to be fairly quiet and, you know, work in a very quiet, measured way most of their working day. So there is that issue of um, person-job fit um, that I sometimes... And when I see people like that, uh, occasionally people are approaching me for assistance with finding out more about themselves so they can make a transition to uh, a job or a career that's more suited to them. Yeah, because there are tests that you can do that really delve into your main personality traits and so you can find the right work. There's plenty of those sort of tests and questionnaires. Yeah, there's lots. Is there anything people can look up for themselves online? Oh, gosh. Um, There are lots. Um, There's a great website that I sometimes use called humanmetrics.com. Now, it's an American one, but on humanmetrics.com, there are a range of personality and interest inventories that people can complete to get some more information about themselves. I sometimes use the Myers-Briggs type indicator, and there are free versions of the Myers-Briggs on the internet, which also give suggestions for career uh, interests and jobs. Um, there are so many out there. If people are seriously looking at transitioning um, out of their job or career to a different one, I would usually suggest if they could afford it, seeking out a counsellor, a psychologist or a coach who specialises in career guidance and career transition. But yeah, there's plenty out there on the internet. Yeah, I I see this um, a lot of the times. You, You hear some psychologists advising people to find a job that they're passionate about and they love, and others say to find a job that you're good at and don't worry so much about passion. What are your thoughts on that split? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a big question. I think that what they're getting at there is finding a sense of purpose, finding a sense of meaning um, where you can use your strengths and talents and put them to good use to serve others. And I do believe this is a universal need that we all have to make a contribution to the world you know, to contribute to other people's well-being in some way or another. Um, And I think there's a lot that we can do. We don't have to kind of quit our jobs and, you know, go on some sort of mission and, you know, solve world hunger or something like that. We can find a sense of purpose where we are right now. And that reminds me actually of the parable of the stonemasons. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. No, where's it from? Um, it's, it's, I don't know where it's from exactly, but it's a kind of an old story, a parable about, you know, um, a man who approached a, you know, an ancient construction site and he saw some stonemasons working and he went up to the first one and said, what are you doing? And he said, you know, I'm chipping away at this granite, trying to make a block out of it and I can't wait till I go home. Okay. And he went to the second one, he said, what are you doing? And he said, you know, I'm making a, a block so that I can put it with other blocks and build a wall. So he seemed a little bit more engaged and sense of purpose. And he went to the third one. He said, what are you doing? And that stonemason said, stood back and he admired his work. And he said, I'm building a cathedral that will be here for hundreds of years to come and visited by thousands and admired by thousands. So they were doing the same work. But the third guy had a real sense of 
the purpose to his work. And, you know, a lot of that is in our heads and in our hearts and is a choice. Yeah, so is that where you find the main issue is it's not so much what you do, it's your attitude to it that determines whether you'll be happy or not? Look, I think it's both. You know, I think there is a reality to this idea of person-job fit. We do have different personalities. We all know that. Well, we're not the same. Uh, There is a reality to that. Uh, and, And, you know, people can, yeah, like you said, pursue their dream, you know, do their degree at university, find the job they thought was their dream job, and, of course, still find unsatisfying aspects to it and, and end up, you know, it being a bit of an anticlimax at some point. So there's definitely a lot to be said for how we engage and tap into our own commitment and dedication to our work. And, um, you know, if you've lost the love before you quit your job, I would say see if you can find, you know, a sense of purpose and meaning right under your nose where you are here and now. Get some help around doing that. Find some strategies to do that. And if after a number of months and good efforts you still can't, then maybe you want to look at um, changing jobs. Some people will find a job that they do like, that it's got a sense of purpose, but they clash with the people they work with. So can you tell us the kind of people problems uh, a lot of your patients might encounter? Well, you know, workplace conflict, I always remind people, is absolutely inevitable. You will never find a workplace free of conflict. And conflict um, is actually hugely important and so much creativity and innovation can come from conflict that's managed well. So, you know, conflict isn't bad necessarily, um, but conflict that doesn't go anywhere, that's unresolved, that festers, is what I see a lot in my mediation work, um, you know, that can leave people feeling very stressed, disengaged, depressed, can affect their health, can start getting headaches and sleep problems, um, you know, then, uh, you know, we've got a real problem on our hands. I often have people come to me and say that they feel like they're being bullied when I do workplace mediations. That's very common. You know, she's bullying me, he's bullying me. And, you know, I keep an open mind because it it may actually fit with the definition of bullying, the behaviours that they're experiencing, or it may not because there are certain things that employers are allowed to do. They are allowed to performance manage people. They are allowed to, um, you know, demote people or transfer them or even sack them if they're on reasonable and fair grounds um, to do so. Uh, So, you know, it's a tricky area of workplace um, law and of workplace stress. If it is a genuine case of bullying, what advice would you give to people? Well, if they've, you know, first of all, I think if people believe they're being bullied, they're they're very wise to go to the Safe Work website or the Human Rights Commission website, one of those government agencies, to get a definition of workplace bullying, to get a better idea of whether it constitutes bullying or not. Uh, If they are pretty clear that that that's what's happening, I think there's a, and you put in place an action plan Naming it as bullying, if you're pretty clear that that's what it is, it fits the definition that you can find quite easily. I think self-care is probably the very first thing after you've named what's going on and kind of externalised that it's it's not you, it, it's actually, you know, the other person's doing. Get support from friends, um, take time out for yourself, breathe, calm down. That would definitely be step one in any good action plan. And then I think notifying um, the people, the appropriate person, whether it's your boss or your boss's boss, or maybe it's HR, maybe it's a union, depending on your workplace. And if that doesn't work, then, you know, you might need to escalate it to the next level. Yeah, there might be an outside body. Probably going to a union would be the third step, would be an escalated step. But, you know, kind of stepping it up in that hierarchy um, to get perspective, to get support. And I would say, you know, reach out and and draw from multiple sources of support. And also remember, if you are the victim of bullying at work, remember the sort of people who get bullied, nine times out of ten, are usually kind-hearted, sensitive and highly competent people. You know, they're the sort of people that workplace bullies don't like. (laughs) Yeah. Because, you know, they're, they're, you know, feeling okay in their own skin, they're good at their job, 
you know, often the, the victims are, you know, so they can hold their head high and know that, um, you know, that, that, that they haven't done anything wrong. So that's a really important part of it as well. Just more broadly, you have done a lot of research into what makes people unhappy in their job. What, what's the gist of that? I think it's when, I think it's the opposite of what makes people happy. And some of the um, key factors are found in the most recent um, large-scale research is, you know, as I mentioned, a sense of purpose. So if people lack that, that would be uh, a major factor in job dissatisfaction. Uh, if people don't feel valued, so, you know, their accomplishments and efforts going unrecognised, uh, you know, I, I actually think we need to start with ourselves on that one and recognise you know, our, our achievements and our efforts that we make and perhaps, you know, speak about them without bragging. We can still let other people know what we're doing and what we've accomplished. Um, focus is another one. So if people are not able to have uninterrupted time to focus on one task, if they have too many interruptions um, and too much on their plate, that'll be another thing that leads to dissatisfaction, stress and unhappiness. Uh, and not having enough breaks, not being able to recharge and regenerate their energy. So these days, a lot of the org behavior, organizational behavior experts talk about time, um, energy management rather than time management. And I personally like that a lot because we can have all the time, you know, in the world if we don't have the energy to get on with things that are going to give us a sense of accomplishment and achievement. It's not about time. It's about energy or just as much about energy anyway. So yeah. recharging, focusing, um, feeling valued and having a sense of purpose seem to be some really key factors. Yeah, I like that. Really practical tips there. Rachel Hannam is a psychologist with North Brisbane Psychologists. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me.